All right, hello, and welcome back to my uh, like tools tutorial in Unity. Today, we're going to be covering uh, saving and loading tile maps from this inspector that we're creating. So as you can see, we've got like a, uh, a few existing tile maps. So if we just click on this one, it will give us the option to say, do we want to save the existing tile map? We don't. And it will just load up the new one, and then we can proceed to edit that in the inspector. Of any inspector in the world, like it was already there. We can then, uh, since this is called Tile Map 12345, uh, I'll just add some more things so you can tell that it's actually different. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, so you'll see it as bright ones now, as well, uh, as opposed to the just the brown and blue of the Tile Map 12345, which you can see in the inspector. So if you click Save Tile Map, it will give us the option or just a notification that there is a Tile Map with that name already. And ask us, do we want to overwrite it? We want to. We don't want to. So we click overwrite. And if you see in the inspector now, it has updated it with uh, new red tiles that we added. So finally, we can also uh, delete tile maps. So we've just got this normal one, so just wood tiles. We can click delete. It will give us uh, just a confirmation little window. Ask to say that do you want to destroy this tile map and it can't be undone do so I'll click delete and it updates so that's no longer in the thing okay let's get on and show you how I did this all right so first little change I made was adding this uh, else statement here uh, or this little if statement here sorry so basically it does uh, if a level creator is null or if the singleton for the level creator is null and it cannot find a level creator in the world, or in the scene, sorry, then it will just do nothing, and that will allow it to reach this bit, so it'll have a button to initialize the tile map, whereas before, it would just uh, create an error, because this condition would fail, and there wouldn't be an alternative, so it'd just go and die. That was ours. So yeah, that was that. Uh, first off, we have a new class called the Save Load Control, which... Well, to be honest, it contains a lot of similarities from the uh, way we loaded in tiles. So, uh, because it basically is just uh, loading and saving game objects to the resources folder. So you'll see a lot of similar things. So first off, we have a directory for saving. Uh, this is like the uh, long form file path to where we are saving the uh, project to, as well as like... So this will bring you to the assets folder of the project, and then we need this little bit extending it to get us to the tile maps folder. And we have the end of the path here as well. Sorry. So yeah, so there are two strings. Uh, then we have the constructor. So when we create a new one, a uh, new instance of the save load control, we just want to initialize it. So that basically makes sure that we have actually created the directory uh, I'll just show you that now. Uh, so that is why we need the full version of the uh, path, so we can get to the, so we can create this saved tile maps folder with the game map tiles here. And for some reason, it doesn't delete them fully, but I'll get onto that in a minute because that's not right now. Uh, yeah, so basically this just checks uh, users directory dot exists to make sure that there is a folder to save and load the uh, tile maps from. Uh, next up, we have a save prefab to folder, which takes the game object to save and the name it's going to be saved under. Uh, first off, we check if the file already exists. So we use the directory for saving and then we add a slash then the name of whatever we're trying to save, and then the prefab. And if that doesn't exist, uh, we just create it. So, uh, yeah, so we just create the uh, path here, and we use the prefab utility, which uh, doesn't need the application.data path, it just needs a path relative to the assets file, probably. Right. Yep. That's what it is. So it needs the assets res slash resources slash save tile map slash whatever you want to call tile map dot prefab, and then it creates the prefab. Uh, that creates the prefab, and then we do asset database dot refresh because that'll like uh, 
sort of make the uh, I'm trying to make it. It basically makes it appear in the inspector uh, by like saying, "All right, look through the folders for any assets we don't have and load them in." Uh, it will do that automatically after a while, but this is just more so, so it's pretty much instant once we've saved. But if the file does exist, so if there is an instant, if there is a tile map with the same name, then we use this editor utility dot display dialog uh, function which returns a boolean and takes four strings. And what that does is it it brings up those little uh, things that I showed you, uh, Hobbit. So load existing tile maps. So it basically brings up this, and it takes four strings. So the first string is the title, which is just this uh, safe bit here. Second string is the description of what it should do. Or, or it does, yeah, it does have to be. That's a good sort of idea, basically. Uh, and that is what appears here. Then the next string it takes is the accept button. So the text will appear in the accept button. And the fourth one is an optional one. Uh, you can also have the decline button. So yeah, no, that's what the uh, text is here. So we add overwrite existing tile map, a tile map with a name, name what already exists, do you want to overwrite? And we have overwrite and cancel. And if we click the overwrite button, or the say the overwrite button, or whatever you put as the accept button, it will return true. And if you click the don't save button, it will return false. So yeah. And it, assuming we click what would be the overwrite button, it will kick off this code to uh, create the prefab and that and at the same location and save it and all that, and that will overwrite whatever was there before. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Uh, next up, we have a some method to check if um, objects exist. So this takes a tile map, and then we'll go through all existing tile maps with the get all prefabs, uh, which I'll get onto in a second. Uh, basically, just make sure if it can find an identical object, it will return true. Otherwise, it just returns false. And a similar method uses the uh, name of the tile map. It will go through all of them if there are two of a, the same name, or if there's a tile map that, that, that matches the name that's passed in, it will return true, otherwise it returns false. And finally, we have a game object uh, method to return a game object array. It get, gets all the saved tile maps in the folder. Uh, it uses the resources.loadall, and remember that when we're using resources.loadall, uh, we need to specify, we only need to specify in relation to the resources folder. So we don't need to have the application.datapath or assets or whatever in there, just uh, save tile maps because that is within a folder called resources. Yeah, I'll save. Yeah. So I'm actually going to write that down. Okay, so. Normal IO full file path. Where is it? Prefab utility path starting at assets folder path starting at resources folder. Yeah, so that's that's as much for me as it is for you guys. So that is how the it works basically what kind of paths you need because i found that confusing as fuck at the start because i'm not sure why it it needs all of it specifically but it does so yeah uh, okay and now we'll get on to how the level editor implements this so first off we have a couple of new yeah my right one sorry a couple of new variables so we have uh Tile map name, which is basically just the name of the cell saved tile map and a save load control or an instance of that. So that would be SLC. It doesn't actually need to be static. Hmm. It didn't come up with an error, so it's fine. So first bit of new code. This is uh, done in the like first little toolbar option. So I believe that is the grid options. Yeah. 
And what we do is, first off, if SLC is null, we create a new save load control. Then we basically draw a button for save tile map. And if we click the button, it will save the prefab to the folder. And it will then reload all the tile maps. So, oh, uh, yeah, tile maps should be a game object array. Uh, yeah, just so we can store the actual tile maps locally, if it wasn't obvious. Uh, next up, we've got some uh, ending. Well, we started at begin. We began a horizontal here just for the save tile map and the label to describe what it does. Then we have another horizontal area for the tile map name. Uh, text area is basically just a little box that allows you to enter text. Uh, you need to specify that the actual string equals the text areas, and you need to pass in the string as an argument. I'm not actually quite, I think, it's like, a, all right, basically why you need to do this is that you're passing a string into this text area method to specify what the uh, text in the text area should be. But at the same time, when you enter text into the text box, you need to specify that that additional text that you've, uh, stored, that you've written needs to be stored in the tile map name string. So that is why you need to have the tile map name equals dui layout dot text area tile map name. It's a bit odd, but you know, whatever. And then we have a label again describing what it is. Uh, then. We have another one called load existing tile maps, and that will just again assign tile maps to from the get all prefabs method that we just went over in the save load control. And if you a couple of episodes ago, I'm not sure how many I've forgotten, but we did a code to draw grids of uh, tiles that we could find or that we processed so we could choose them and paint different tiles. Uh, we've basically done a similar thing with the tile maps. So if it is null or there aren't any actual tile maps, we just put a label saying we can't find any tile maps, try loading them again. Otherwise, we have a int x and y equals zero. And again, if y is zero, we begin a vertical area and increase y. If x is zero, we begin horizontal. And we cycle through each of the tile maps that we have loaded. And we use asset preview dot get asset preview to draw it, and oh, to get the text to get a texture of what the uh, asset the actual time map looks like for like a preview. That we then create a label with the name, and we're still here a vertical here. Uh, so that. Uh, then we have a button uh, which acts as basically if you click the button, it will load it, and it performs a prefab save check. So if either the game object isn't identical to one that's already been found or the name is if in, I mean, so if it can't find it in the sorry, if it can't find uh either the game object in the list of existing tiles or the name of the current tile map in the existing files, then it will say, Do you want to save this current tile map? and it will give you the option to save. And if you do, it will click uh, Save Prefab Folder and do that. It will then create an instance of the load, uh, instantiate a new uh, instance of whatever button you pressed. So uh, of whatever time up on the, that is linked to the button you've pressed, sorry. And store the current one under old. It will then call set singleton in, from the level creator on the new one. Or the new the loaded map, which will uh, set the static level creator. Yep, so it'll set uh, this value, whereas static level creator me, that'll be to the new one. So all the singleton stuff will work for the new uh, file, the file uh, script or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we then destroy immediate for the old game object again, just because we need to destroy it immediately. Can't use, you can't use destroy normally, you've got to use destroy immediate if you're making an editor tool. 
And finally, we refresh the old uh, tar maps. And again, and finally, uh, third thing is we have a delete button. Uh, so if that's pressed, we delete the tar map from the folder completely, almost actually. Because uh, one thing I've noticed is that if you do click delete, it will delete it here. Uh, and it won't uh, come up again, so we can click click and load and it won't. Oh, if we go to save tower maps, it will uh, still be there, but there's like a blank game object. I'm not sure if that's a bug or something to do with Unity, but yeah, that was odd. But it's not too big of a deal. It doesn't like, I don't think it gives you performance here or anything, and it still works fine uh, loading and saving, so I will ignore it for now. Uh, so yeah, if you click this delete button, it gives you a dialogue option just saying, are you sure you want to delete it? It can't be undone, etc, etc, etc. And you just delete and cancel. There's two options. And if you click delete, it will destroy, it will destroy the, it will destroy immediate that uh, particular game object. But the second Boolean is basically saying that we want to be able to destroy assets as well. And since we've not instantiated an instance of G, because G is referring to the actual prefab object that because uh, is in the list, so it will, and we're allowing asset destruction, it will remove that asset basically, and we refresh so it gets rid of it, and reloads all, and finally we load all the prefabs again to the time maps list or array, and yeah. That's how the deleting works, and we end the vertical here. So it, that's how all the like the name, the image and button, and the delete button all appear in a like vertical line. And I'll just save that again actually. Save. There we go. And it's all done nicely in alphabetical order actually. I share unityness. Oh, it's, it's unity doing something, but it works. So I'm good that so yeah uh that was pretty much it i think is there anything else i wanted to do not done that done that so yeah that was creating uh what was it oh saving and loading sorry with the editor but uh, yeah so cheers for watching like comment subscribe all that shit uh go check out loud or quiet which is in paid release and i'm working on apocalypse mode at the moment so that will be out sometime early September, early to mid-September. Or actually it might be out for the full release, I'm not sure, because I want to put it on Steam as well. So yeah, look out for that. Uh, check out all the links in the descriptions of various stuff I've done, like the RTS assets and Omega Station and all that shit. It's all good. So cheers for watching and bye!